Before uh, starting with uh, the editors, Vim and uh, Emacs, I would like to finish a couple of examples that we couldn't finish uh, last time. Actually, with Dragon, we had some uh, problem. Uh, first of all, let's see how to log in uh, with SSH, but using uh, a key. I, or it is called actually identity file. And to generate an identity file, uh, We use the command SSH again generate. And if uh, we see the output of the command here, uh, we also can specify a type. Uh, I would like to use the type uh, ECDSA. Let's see, DSA. And uh, now it prompts me for a file where to uh, save the key. Uh, I would like to save it on for the passphrase. I'm uh, I'm not giving a passphrase because the idea is to log in. Uh, there, there is already a key, this key there. Let, let me remove it first because we created it last time. I'm storing it at dot uh, SSH key one. Passphrase, no passphrase, enter. Uh, why? Why is it? Okay, this time it, uh, it worked. So it does not recognize this uh, tilde expansion. It is a, a shell expansion. Uh, now we have a private key and the public uh, key. We want to copy the pu public key on the server, and we can copy it on on the server with uh, with a command. SSH uh, copy ID and the identity file that is going to be copied is Oh, I have to give also the, the server where it is going to be copied. The account, account Dashamir on server one, on server one. Uh, now we can try to log in with this uh, key, SSH, uh, identity, identity file. And then server one. And you see that now I am on server one and I uh, it did not ask me for a password. It used the uh, private key to log in to server one. And uh, while we are at, the, at server one, let's see. Uh, where it, it was stored the the public key that, that we sent it is actually 
stored in the in this file of authorized keys. And uh, it has appended it because there was already a key there from the last time that we tried, and it has appended the key uh, to this file, uh, authorized keys. Exit, and I'm back on uh, Linux training. Uh, this is the public key that was uh, sent on the server, and uh, if we check, it is actually uh, the same as this one. Uh, now that we can log in uh, with uh, this key, we can create an entry uh, on the configuration file of SSH. And uh, the configuration file of SSH is at Config. The file uh, con uh, file name config on dot ssh, and let's say that it is on the home uh, directory. And I can add, uh, I can add an entry on it uh, like this. This is, this can be any name. Uh, it doesn't have to be the name of the server. Host name can be either the uh, the name of the server or the IP. And uh, to make clear that it can be anything, let's call it that this can be any name. And now we have the user. The username is the Shamir on that server, on server one. And the identity file that is going to be used to access the server is located at home directory.ssh e1. Save and exit. Uh, now that I, I have this configuration uh, on this file, I can log into server one like this. And uh, immediately I'm uh, logged into uh, the server one. I didn't have to specify the IP or the server name because it is on the configuration. Uh, I didn't have to give the username because it is in the configuration. And I didn't have to specify the identity file. For example, in this, uh, case here, uh, I use the uh, identity file, the username, the server name, but uh, here uh, all of these uh, data are on the uh, on the configuration file. And even I can also add uh, on, the, uh, on the configuration file, I, I can also add the port. For example, if, if it is a port different from uh, port 22, if it is the default port, then it is 22, doesn't uh, need to be added. But if it is a different port, then uh, we can add the port as well here. Yeah. And uh, to run a command uh, remotely on server one, now, uh, this command is being executed on, on server one. Uh, this execute, uh, executes the command and 
immediately exit from the server one. Uh, there, there is a command SCP or secure copy, uh, which uses SSH protocol to copy uh, files to a remote server. And uh, in, now that we have a configuration uh, for for the server one in this uh, configuration file, then uh, this can be used very easily. Usually we have to uh, specify the server name, the username, the identity file, the port, etc. But uh, now that we have them in the configuration, it can be used very easily. For example, uh, I'm creating a file that is going to be copied. Now, I want to copy this file on the remote server. First of all, let's see what is on the server. Um, let, let's remove some, some files. Now I can copy this file on the remote server. To copy. And uh, copy it on server one. Close a transfer. And we see that uh, it is it is there. Another command that can be used to copy uh, files from one server to another is SFTP. And this tool as well, this command as well, uh, uses SSH uh, protocol to, uh, to connect to remote server. And now uh, I can connect to server one like this, SFTP. And I'm on server one some command ls uh, see the commands that are uh, the files that are there help to see some more uh, uh, commands uh, i think it should be get for example if i want to get this file from server or i can use put to put uh, file from server, I can use CD, for example, to go to download. And quit or exit. We, we have seen the rsync uh, command before, but uh, in local contest to copy a local uh, directory to another uh, local directory, but it can also be used to copy uh, directories remotely. And uh, again, this one uses SSH uh, protocol as well uh, and makes a secure communication. And since it uh, uses the SSH, uh, the configuration that we made uh, for the server one uh, works automatically for this one as well. So let's say that uh, we, are, we are going to copy the directory test D.
maybe our sync is not on the remote. Uh, uh, Is not on the remote uh, server. Let me let me install it. Few seconds. So now it uh, worked uh, because uh, our sync has to be present uh, both on the local uh, host and on the remote host. And uh, again, since we specify uh, the name of the server here. We don't have to give the IP, the username, uh, identity file, etc. Uh, they are used automatically. I'd like to uh, do another example with uh, file systems, but uh, it needs uh, root access. So uh, I'm going to try it on my computer because on my account because I, I can get root access and you can try it at home uh, later. First of all, I will create a big file uh, and uh, in it, I will create a file system. I will format it uh, with a certain file system. This command F allocate allocate uh, allocates a space for a file. This is the size, one one giga, and the name of the file. So we see that uh, we have a big file of uh, one uh, giga. It is an empty file because we didn't uh, create any con content. We just reserved the space for a big file. Now we can create a loop device. It is called a loop device because it is kind of uh, loop back or it is a virtual uh, device, not a real device. Uh, and we can use the command load setup or loop back setup. And the file this dot init. Let's try there. Ah, this example is not working. Maybe I, I need to install something, or maybe because it is a virtual ma a machine and it, uh, it does not, it is a, a Docker container and it uh, does not have. Uh, permission to create uh, to create. Loopback devices, I don't know anyway. Uh, now uh, let's let's start with the uh, Vim. Uh, a tutorial. 
So we start Vim with the command Vim, but before it, maybe I should. I should uh, try to display uh, the keys that I'm uh, typing uh, better. Uh, this command screen key. Displays uh, on the screen the commands that uh, I'm typing uh, or the keys that I'm ty typing. So uh, this is how V looms, uh, looks like when we started for, for the first time. Uh, these are these uh, are empty lines, and to show that uh, not empty lines, uh, non-existing lines. Uh, they are not empty lines, uh, and to show that they are non-existing lines, they they start with a uh, tilde. So these are not empty lines. Uh, and to quit uh, the v, uh, Vim, uh, we we press uh, column and we get a prompt here. And uh, Q for uh, quit. So this is how uh, we uh, quit Vim. Uh, now we can start with Vim uh, with a file. For example, and uh, Vim, uh, the Vim editor has two uh, ed editing modes. Uh, right now we cannot uh, type uh, text. Uh, in the file, because uh, if uh, we try to type uh, uh, the 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 keys that we type are interpreted as as commands and uh, as Vim commands. Uh, to start to start typing, uh, we are uh, uh, inserting text. To insert text, we we type uh, I, E, uh, lowercase I, and. Uh, here in the status, we, we see that uh, it is in the insert mode. In the insert mode, uh, whatever we type in the keyboard uh, goes as text uh, of the file, is inserted as text of the file. Now to uh, to save this file, uh, we have to go from insert mode to the normal mode or the the command mode, and uh, we press escape uh, to exit the insert mode. Uh, now that we are in the command mode, we uh, press column and then W for write. And uh, now uh, the status informs us that uh, a, new, a new file is being created. Now to append some more text to the text that we already have in the buffer, uh, we we press A, uh, lowercase A, and then we start inserting text. Again, escape. Uh, we go to the command mode, or we leave the insert mode, and then column uh, W. We save again. Now to move around in Vim, uh, we uh, or first le first let's add some uh, more lines. Now uh, we can open uh, a new file uh, below the, the current uh, line, uh, a new line. We can open a new line below the current line by pressing O, lower, lowercase O. So now we are again in in insert mode, but uh, starting with a new line. And let's say that we type line 
school. Then escape and save, right or save. And uh, to move around uh, in Vim, uh, we use the keys uh, H, J, K, and L. For example, with uh, H, we are moving left. With uh, L, we are, we, are, we are moving right. And J, K is moving up. J is moving down. But we can also use the arrow, arrow keys. So I'm using down, arrow, down, and also left, left, right. Uh, it, uh, uh, we can use this one as well. Now we use the uh, we use uh, if uh, we use the letter uh, lowercase o, it will open a line uh, below the current line, a new line. Uh, let let's undo this uh, this action, escape, and then u. U is for undo. Uh, if uh, we press capital O or uh, uppercase O, it will open a line above the current line again press escape and u for, for undo and uh, moving around in uh, vim we can also use uh, zero for example goes to the beginning of line and dollar goes to the end of line And we can press B to move one word before the, the cursor, and capital V will escape uh, will escape the punctuations. And we can use W to move to the next word. But uh, if we use uppercase W, it will escape the punctuations. Problem. And uh, if we press capital G, it goes to the last line. And if we press one G, it goes to the first line. If we press, for example, three capital G, it goes to the third line. So these are some basic uh, movement commands in Vim. Now to delete a character, we can press X. And each time that we press X, it will uh, delete the character under the cursor. And uh, to undo, we press U. And we can repeatedly uh, press U to, to undo uh, all the previous actions. Another way to delete text uh, is besides X is D. Uh, we press D and then we press a moving uh, uh, command and it will delete from the present location of the uh, cursor to uh, where the command uh, goes. For example, if I press B and uh, dollar, dollar is the end of line. It will delete uh, from, from the current location of the cursor to up to the end of line. D dollar and press u for undo 
if I pass uh, D and zero, it will delete from the current location to the beginning of line. And I press U for undo again. I press uh, D and uh, W, it will delete uh, a word. Undo, undo, undo. And if I press uh, D and G, it will delete from the uh, current location to the end of to the last line. For example, D and capital G. Again, undo. So uh, the B command uh, and another uh, command with B is uh, double D, 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 it will delete the current line. And U, undo. Now, uh, whenever we delete some lines with, or some text with uh, the command D, uh, it does not, uh, uh, is uh, thrown away, it is kept in a, in a buffer or like uh, like a clipboard, and from the uh, from the clipboard we can paste it again uh, in the text somewhere else. For example, uh, in uh, Vim terminology uh, terminology uh, it is called yank, uh, uh, no, not yank uh, paste. Sorry. So uh, to to paste the content of the clipboard or the content of the buffer uh, under the under the current line, we we press P, uh, lowercase p, and if I undo, I uh, reverse it. And uh, to paste it above the current line, I press capital P or uppercase P. So lowercase uh, below, uppercase above the current line. And uh, if we want just to copy uh, some text or some lines uh, without deleting them, uh, we use the command Y, uh, and it uh, it stands for Yang. Uh, for example, if I press double Y, it will just copy the the current line in the buffer. Or let, let's uh, try here. Double Y, and go here. Press P. And the, the command Y uh, has uh, uh, the same logic as command uh, D. So uh, we can press uh, from, uh, uh, we can copy from the current location of uh, the cursor uh, up to uh, up to the location that uh, we would move uh, with the command. For example, uh, if I press uh, Y, W, it will, it will yank the, uh, uh, the current, uh, the current word. Y W. Uh, let's try with uh, P. So let's try it here. With P. Uh, if I press, for example, uh, Y dollar it will yank from the current location uh, of the cursor up to the end of the uh, line. Why dollar? Because dollar is uh, the location or the address of the end of line. And let's go here, paste. I press Y zero, for example, 
it will yank from the current location to the beginning of line. And if I press Y capital G, it will uh, yank uh, from the uh, current line up to the last line. Let's try with uh, capital P. So it, uh, it copied all these lines into the buffer and uh, the, the cursor was located here. With capital P, we, uh, we pasted them uh, on the line above. And uh, something that uh, I forgot to mention is that uh, the commands in uh, Vim can get a number uh, before the command. And uh, this means that the command is repeated uh, this many times. For example, uh, if the command DW deletes a word, if I type 5DW, it will uh, repeat this command five times. It will uh, delete five words. 5 dw, it, it deletes five words. And uh, the same works also for yanking. If I press uh, yw, uh, it will uh, yank or copy just one word. If I press 5 yw, it will uh, copy or yank five words. And also for the command X, if I press, for, for example, uh, 3X, it will uh, repeat the command X three times. And so it will uh, delete three uh, characters. If uh, we want to join two lines, uh, for example, if we want to join line three with line four, uh, while we are at line three, uh, we type capital J for join. If I repeat it again, it will join the next line. about uh, searching. Uh, I want to search forward for a certain character, then I type F and the character. For example, if I want to search for the uh, character A, uh, I, I, I type F and A. It will go to the uh, next occurrence of character A. I type a semicolon, then it will repeat the same search. Again, so it goes to the next character A. So this search with F uh, works only in, in the current line. If uh, we want to search uh, in the whole uh, file, then uh, we pass we we pass slash slash, and then we type. Uh, the the word that we want to search for, for example, line. It highlights uh, the met the matching uh, word. And press enter. Then the cursor goes to the uh, to the matched line. And if uh, we want to repeat the same search again, then we type uh, we just type n for next. N. And it will uh, again uh, repeat the last search. Uh, 
this kind of search is similar to less. In less, we can search the same way as well. And uh, we saw that uh, in less, we could use regular expressions. The same is true with uh, in uh, Vim as well. So after, uh, after the slash, we can type a regular expression, not just uh, a plain word. For example, let's try. And now it is not. Now search and replace. Uh, to search and replace, uh, we press column and we can uh, press a command, search replace command here. And uh, le let's try this command, uh, percentage. Yes. Now this percentage is the range uh, of the lines where this uh, replace command uh, or this substitute command is uh, being to be executed. This S is for the command substitute and we will uh, substitute uh, this uh, word with this, this one. And uh, this G means uh, global. It will uh, substitute more than one occurrence of, uh, of the matching pattern. Uh, without G, it will substitute only the first occurrence in, in a line. And uh, let's try, uh, I use the up arrow to get the previous search uh, and replace the previous command. Now from the lowercase L to uppercase L, but now I'm adding another modifier, which is uh, C for uh, confirmation. And uh, now before replacing uh, each matching uh, word, it will ask for confirmation. Yes, no, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, Yes, we'll perform the replace and will uh, not perform the replace. A will uh, perform the replace in all the remaining cases. Uh, L, uh, this L uh, will perform the replace and then quit, last, the last replace. And uh, this uh, Q, I guess it is, it is uh, quit. Uh, we can edit more than one file with uh, Vim. First, let's quit, write, write and quit uh, this file, W and Q, uh, and Q uh, write and quit. Or if, uh, if we want to quit without uh, saving, we can press uh, quit and uh, exclamation. Let's create another file, text file. Now we, we can edit both uh, files. To switch from the first from one uh, buffer to uh, to the next one, we we type semicolon and then B, and then N for next. So this is the next buffer. Let's write again B N because there are only two buffers. Uh, after the second one, uh, the next is the first one again. And also we can use B P. Or previous buffer previous uh, 
And to see a list of buffers, uh, we can type to go to the buffer with a certain number, we can uh, we can type, uh, for example, buffer and the number of the buffer, the second one. If uh, we have two buffers, then we can copy text from one buffer to another one. For example, uh, we are on the first buffer. Uh, we press double Y to copy the current uh, line. Y, and then we go to the next buffer. And uh, let's say that I move to this location and I press uh, capital P. It will, it will paste the content of the of the uh, clipboard uh, in, in this location about the cursor. Undo again. If I want to insert uh, an entire file, uh, inside another file inside this one, then uh, I press R for it and then two. And it will uh, include the content of uh, the file inside uh, at the location of the of the cursor. Now, let's say that I want to save this file with uh, another name, uh, with a different name. Then I type W and say who want dot txt. But uh, although uh, I have saved it as who one dot txt, I am still working on the old file, file uh, on the old file. without save. So uh, this is uh, about uh, Vim. And uh, there is also a command Vim tutor, which uh, starts uh, start a Vim tutorial. And you can, you can look it up yourself at home. It, it has some instructions and uh, it gives uh, about uh, what to do. So you, you can try this tutorial uh, yourself at home. And uh, now, also, Emacs is also a, a tutorial like this, and uh, we will uh, see the first steps of the uh, Emacs tutorial. First of all, uh, we can start Emacs with the command Emacs, but uh, I like to start it in, in the terminal and uh, not with the graphical window. Let's start with the graphical window. Uh, and to, to close the control, uh, Control X, Control C. Uh, but uh, I would like to start it. Uh, first, let, let's change the the mode of of screencast or screen key. This option uh, NW means no window, so it will start on the terminal. And uh, here you see that uh, there is a, a small screen of instructions, and uh, one of the instructions is how to exit Emacs. 
and a max different from uh, Vim is always in insert mode. So whatever you type at the, key, at the keyboard, uh, the normal keys are insert in the content of the file. How, however, it has some control keys or special keys uh, to give the commands for the command. This uh, C means that uh, the, uh, the control key is passed. And uh, there is also uh, a meta key which is uh, written like this. Eh? And meta key is usually the alt key, but uh, sometimes uh, the alt key does not work. For example, uh, there are some key sequences that are intercepted by, uh, uh, by the window. Uh, for example, uh, here we see that there are some, uh, in the menu, there are some uh, commands that are, uh, that are accessed with the, I don't see any here. So some commands are accessed with uh, the, the command alt, alt and pressing a key. And those, com uh, those commands are intercepted by the, by the window. And so they, they don't work inside. And in, in this case, to, to emulate the, the meta, we press escape and release it. Escape and then uh, the the next character. When we, when we press the control key, we keep it pressed and then we press press the the next uh, character or the ne the next letter. And now to exit Emacs, uh, we type control control X control C. I press control, keep it pressed, and then press X and C. Control. X, C. And uh, let's start again. Max. Uh, for the tutorial, we can uh, press Control H and then release the control and press T. Control H and then T. And it starts the tutorial. So uh, the first thing it explains the uh, control and meta uh, uh, key combinations. So meta is uh, the alt key. We press the alt key and then press the next key. But sometimes uh, if the alt key does not uh, work or if the alt key does not exist on the keyboard, we can press, uh, we can press escape uh, and release it. Press escape and release it. So, to end the Emacs session, we already tried it. Con control X, Control C. And uh, if, if we are uh, starting a command, but uh, for some reason we want to cancel it, then we can answer uh, Control G. Uh, it is like canceling a command, a partial command. But Control X and uh, K actually closes the current uh, buffer. Le let's try Control X, K. Uh, kill, uh, close or kill, kill buffer uh, tutorial. Save, save your position in the tutorial. Uh, okay, yes. Uh, le let's start again the tutorial, Control H. Control H and T. Now, uh, to move page by page, uh, we or to view the next uh, screen, we use uh, Control V or scroll down. To move backwards uh, one screen, we type uh, meta V or alt V. You see, uh, when I pressed alt V, uh, it uh, actually uh, started open the, the menu view, uh, the, the terminal. So uh, I can emulate uh, the alt key by the meta key by pressing uh, escape and then uh, V press and release escape 
and then V. So again, uh, control V. And uh, to move around, I'm using the arrow keys right now. Uh, but uh, the Emacs, uh, in Emacs, we can move around with uh, control, control F moves one character forward, uh, control B, one character backward, control P, one line uh, above, previous, control N, one line uh, below the current line. Uh, le let's try control F. And uh, control V. Uh, control P to move uh, above. And uh, control N next. But uh, also the arrows uh, can be used as well. And control L will uh, will center the the current uh, line. So with uh, control L, the the line where where the cursor is located uh, goes to the center of the screen. Uh, maybe you have not uh, you have noticed then when we go forward or or, or backward in uh, Emacs. Uh, it will uh, switch the screen not uh, smoothly. Uh, it, it will switch it page by page. And it keeps the, the last two lines of the current page. For example, these are the, the last two, two lines. If uh, I keep moving with control, uh, with control B downwards, uh, it will move one page at a time, uh, not uh, continuously. So uh, this is a nice tutorial. Uh, it is not very long. We don't have uh, much time uh, right now to finish it, but uh, you can try it at home and finish it yourself uh, if uh, if you you like to to learn uh, Emacs. Uh, it is not necessary. You can just learn uh, only we, only Beam or only Emacs. It's not uh, needed to learn both of them. But uh, I think that Emacs is a powerful. Uh, editor especially for developers and also for system administrators uh, it is uh, uh, it is important because uh, lots of tools uh, use the control keys of uh, emacs for example if i uh, if i come to to a previous command if i want to move to the beginning of line uh, to, to the start of line i press uh, Control A, and I, I go to the to the start of, of line. If I uh, want to go to the end, I press Control E, Control End. These are Emacs commands. You know, the same commands are used in Emacs, and uh, other Emacs commands as well can be can be applied in the command line, or in other in other locations or in other uh, programs. So it is worth to know at least the basics of uh, MX. And the same goes for, for Vim as well. There are some other programs then that use the Vim uh, commands for moving around like uh, H, J, K, L, and so on. 
So let, let's see if there are any any questions. How do you get uh, the big writing uh, over the screen in Vim? Yes, it, it is a, it is screen key. App, app install screen key, as uh, Paolo has said. So uh, if there are no questions, then uh, we are closing for today. And uh, next time we will start with uh, bash scripting at the same time. Uh, from 19 to 20 or 7 to 8 p.m. Okay, nice evening and see you next time. Bye, Shamir. Thank